Cover crop based organic no-till soybean production uses a cover crop in combination with termination by a roller crimper to provide full season weed suppression without the use of tillage or herbicides. Starting in 2018, a series of small plot and farm scale trials were initiated to evaluate cover crop based organic no-till soybean production in Ontario. In this first video of a three part series, we'll explain the basics of the system and observations to date. Then you'll have the opportunity to hear from two different Ontario producers who are making organic no-till soybean production work on their farms. With organic no-till soybean production, it's important to select a suitable field. Choose a site with good background fertility and low or modest perennial weed pressure. Next, the rye must be seeded at some point in September and should be drilled at a high rate to ensure a thick competitive cover crop. Cereal rye begins growing rapidly in the second half of May. Soybeans are typically seeded at the time of crimping but can be seeded earlier into standing rye at the boot stage. Rye should be crimped at full anthesis. This is when the plant is fully flowering and releasing pollen. In southwestern Ontario, this typically occurs in the first week of June. If soybeans were seeded early into the rye, they should be at the first trifoliate stage to be crimped. Seeding soybeans into standing rye is a bit easier for the planter or drill, but can result in stand issues due to tractor tire tracks from crimping afterward. Seeding after crimping avoids tire track damage, but can be more challenging for the drill or planter to cut through the thick mulch. The goal of crimping is to crimp, but not cut the stems of the plant. In some seasons, it may take two passes with the crimper to successfully kill the rye. When it comes to seeding the soybeans, whether using a planter or a drill, it's critical to use either a sharp cutting coulter or sharp openers and have sufficient down pressure to cut the mulch. Using closing wheels designed for high residue conditions helps close the seed slot. Bumping up the soybean seeding rate is necessary in this system. Research from Cornell University has found that a rate of 250 to 300,000 seeds per acre is optimal for organic growers. Once the soybeans have been seeded and the rye has been crimped, it's up to the mulch to suppress weeds until the soybeans canopy. Ideally, the soil should not be visible and a thick mulch will prevent weeds from germinating. US research suggests that 6,000 to 8,000 pounds per acre of dry matter is required to provide sufficient weed suppression. In 2019, the organic no-till system had varied success across trial sites. It yielded nine to 15 bushels per acre less than the standard production system. Based on what was learned from the first year of the trial, plots in 2020 were seeded at a higher rate, up from 225 to 300,000 seeds per acre. Early observations have shown that where there is enough rye biomass, weeds have been well suppressed. Low biomass sites, however, have struggled. Based on the first couple of years of experience in Ontario, there are a few clear keys to success to organic no-till soybean production. First, select a field with low to modest perennial weed pressure and good background fertility. Next, treat the rye cover crop like a crop. Seed it early, thick, and ensure it has adequate nutrients to thrive. And last but not least, pay close attention to soybean seeding details. Use well-maintained seeding equipment that has been modified for the high residue conditions. Don't be afraid to use a high soybean seeding rate. Before considering organic no-till soybean production, it's important to think about how it will fit into your crop rotation. Rye must be seeded in September, following an early harvested crop such as corn silage or a small grain. Following the no-till soybeans, winter wheat is not a viable option because of volunteer rye. Alternative crop options should be considered. Cover crop based organic no-till soybean production presents a new opportunity for growers who are looking to improve soil health and reduce labor demand in the spring and summer on their farm. It does come with risks, however, and requires planning and investment upfront. To hear the first-hand experiences of two Ontario growers, check out the next two videos in this series. For information on field trial results in 2020, check out fieldcropnews.com this winter, as well as Ontario Soil and Crop Improvement Association's Crop Advances webpage.